Okay, hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you for attending our um, New York City Tax Lean webinar tonight. This is the final webinar before the actual tax lien sale. As you can see on your screen, the deadline for this um, tax lien sale is tomorrow, Thursday, 9 3. You have to either make your payments or try to set up into a payment agreement. Again, the deadline is tomorrow. We only have tomorrow. So this is the last ditch effort to get people who are on the lien sale to either make payments or enter into agreement. And so tonight um, we will be hearing from different organizations. Uh, Ms. Sheila Voyard, she's the Director of Outreach at the New York City Department of Finance. Mr. Mike Sharp, he's the Outreach Liaison also with New York City Department of Finance. Mr. Peter Weitzman, he is with um, New York Housing and Preservation Development, and Mr. Patrick Hendricks, who is the Collections Unit Director at New York City Department of Environmental Protection, for, formerly um, commonly known as DEP. And so you will hear these speakers tonight um, as we speak, and we will also be hearing from Ms. Tamara Del Carmen, and Mr. Alex Nippenberg from Brooklyn Legal Services Corp A, who will be speaking to us about the legal side once the, new, once the sale is done, um, you know, what are next steps for people who, whose liens have been sold. Thank you. And so tonight we would like to thank the um, following elected officials who um, collaborated with us to make this event possible. So we want to take the opportunity to thank New York State Senator Kevin Parker, New York State Senator Roxanne Prasad. She's in the house tonight and we'll be speaking to people in a few minutes. Um, Assembly Member Rodney Bishot, Assembly Member Mathilde Frontas, Council Member Alika Ampre Samuels, Council Member Inez Barron, and um, can't see the bottom, I'm so sorry. Council member Farah Lewis. We, we just wanna thank all of those people for um, assisting us and to make this event possible. Next slide. Senator Prasad, would you like so, to say a few words? Well, good evening, everyone. I am happy to be here. And it's always a pleasure working with NHS and all of the partners who are on, on these, this call this evening. I just want to encourage everyone who's listening to share this information. It's important information. Uh, our, our intent is to make sure everyone remains in their homes. We do not want to see anyone losing their homes. So I appreciate NHS and the partners bringing this webinar together this evening even though tomorrow is the deadline. And again, I want to stress to everyone, tomorrow is the deadline um, to make some kind of arrangement um, so to prevent the, the lien sale. Um, please take the information, reach out to NHS and all of the partners who are on this call, and also share the information with anyone whom you know uh, needs it. So again, I thank you all for doing this evening, this evening, and I hope as many people as possible. Because as you know, in addition to the lien sale, we have a fork issue across our district. And so we want to, again, as many people as possible, we want to save you, um, save your homes for you. So again, thank you all very much and have a great evening. Thank you, Senator Prasad, for those nice, kind words. And I hope everyone heard what she said and really take heed as, again, tomorrow is the deadline to enter into an arrangement, to make a payment tomorrow, Thursday, 9-3. D-Day is Friday, um, September 4th. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're very welcome. And so, just to tell you a little bit about who we are. So our organization is NHS Brooklyn, CDC Development Corp. We are a house, nonprofit housing organization. And our prog some of our programs and services are um, first time home buying, one on one home buyer counseling. We also have a tenant support counseling um, program, renters insurance education, uh, foreclosure prevention and intervention services, um, home maintenance training, home repair loans and grants. We do administer a grant program along with um, a home repair loan program that if you have that need, you can, of course, 
um, contact NHS Brooklyn and we'll be help you to um, get a loan or a grant if, if, you know, if grants are available at this time. Um, we also have our homeowners insurance review where we have um, our legal person on, on site who can go over your insurance policies with you to talk about what you're buying, if you're overinsured, if you're underinsured, you know, what you need to know before you buy homeowners insurance. And of course, our home maintenance course and education, which teaches you how to make, you know, minor repairs in your homes, how to fix a light, light switch, some minor plumbing, how to do some sheet racking and tiling. Um, that's what our home, home maintenance program does for us. Right now it's on pause due to COVID and we know this is a one-on-one -on -one situation where we have in-person um, training going on. So that is on pause. Just continue to view our website to see when we are back on track with that course. Thank you. And we also have financial education for everyone. Where, where we have a coaching and a credit improvement piece. Really popular program, really needed in our communities. And so we, we um, ask people to really take advantage of it. It's really good. And in today's you know, COVID, COVID era, we're seeing a lot of need for estate planning as you know, homeowners have passed on. And so we have a wills and trust education and counseling piece that someone can attend. Visit our website for the next one in that series. And of course, we'll also um, have counseling regarding emergency preparedness, avoiding financial and natural disasters. For assistance, you can contact us at um, our two offices. Although we're temporarily close to in-person um, clients, we can be reached via phone. We are indeed counseling people over the phone and doing intakes over the phone. Offices are at East Flatbush, 2806 Church Avenue, at Canarsie, 9701 Avenue L. And our website, nhsbrooklyn.org. Telephone number is 718-469-4679. Or you can email us at info at nhsbrooklyn.org. And so tonight, we also have with us another partner, um, the Center for New York City Neighborhoods. And we're gonna invite Mr. Kevin Wolf at this time to speak on the programs and services that the center provides. Kevin, you have the floor. Yes, th thank you very much, Angela. And I just wanna give a shout out to NHS of Brooklyn for putting this event together. Um, it's very important that the homeowners get the information that they need on the tax lien sale. And so NHS of Brooklyn has done a lot of hard work um, the Center for New York City Neighborhoods is a nonprofit, and we partner with NHS of Brooklyn. They're one of our strongest partners in the city, and we're also very happy to have uh, Brooklyn Legal Service Corp Corporation A that's on the call as well. They're one of our legal service partners. Um, I'm not going to talk for very much because Angela covered pretty much everything that I would say, and, and I know that the le legal service providers are going to talk a lot about what they can offer, so I ask you to listen to them. What I do want to say is that the center does have financial assistance available for homeowners who find themselves on the tax lien sale. We have helped homeowners in the past. Um, we've worked very closely with our partners who provide excellent uh, counseling and resources, but we have financial assistance available Two new programs um, that we are offering one for senior citizens. Um, called the Equitable Reverse Mortgage Assistance Program. We can provide uh, a low interest or uh, um, forgivable loan for senior citizens um, with reverse mortgages that find themselves on the lien sale. In addition to that, we also have another program around COVID relief um, called uh, the Community um, uh, the uh, Community Building Community Builders Loan. Um, it is available for homeowners uh, who find themselves, um, you know, due to COVID, uh, find themselves in a position of uh, distress. It's a forgivable or uh, a low interest loan um, that is available for homeowners. And we, we urge uh, people to reach out um, to um, the center so that we can provide assistance on that. Um, I'm going to leave our contact information. You can reach us. Uh, at 311 and ask for the center. You can also call us directly. Our number is 646-786-0888. Uh, 
Um, if you don't take anything away, if you want to take one thing away from, from what I'm saying, reach out to reach out to the center, reach out to NHS of Brooklyn, reach out to uh, BKA, our, our network partners. We're here to help all of those homeowners who find themselves in the tax lien sale, no matter how last minute it may be. Thank you again, uh, Angela, for, for this opportunity to speak, and I look forward to, to uh, listening to everyone else's presentation. Thank you, Kevin, for that presentation. Great information so people know that there is some sort of resource that is out there to help you, you know, as we said, last minute, but still reach out for any assistance that's out there to help you with this lean sale. And so without further ado, we're also going to invite Mr. Alex Nippenberg and Ms. Tamara Del Carmen to take the floor. Um, they're going to speak to us about the legal side of what happens after a tax lien, right? Because it's not in a vacuum. Something is going to happen once your lien is sold. And so what do you need to know? What information do you need to take to uh, make the next steps? And so they're going to present that information for us tonight. Alex and Tamara, you have the floor. Thank you so much, Angela, and good evening, everyone. Thank you, NHS Brooklyn, for hosting this very important presentation on the New York City tax lien, as well as CNYCN and our elected officials and also our co-panelists. Um, the, you know, as Angela had mentioned, the sale is scheduled for Friday, September 4th. So if you are a property owner and your property is listed in the sale, please make arrangements to pay off your debt or enter into a payment plan by tomorrow, September 3rd. So let me just give you a little bit of background of Brooklyn Legal Services Corp. A. We provide representation to homeowners who are facing foreclosure in the state courts and federal courts, including bankruptcy courts, where we file chapter sevens and 13s for debtors and homeowners. And we also have a low income taxpayer clinic where we represent taxpayers who have issues with the IRS and New York State Department of Taxation and Finance. So tonight we're gonna be discussing what happens after the tax lien is sold. Basically, after the tax lien is sold, the liens are sold to a trust with the Bank of New York as the trustee. The trust liens are then serviced by one of two companies, the Mooring Tax Asset Group or Tower Capital Management. The homeowner will receive a notice from the city within 30 to 90 days of the sale with information on who purchased the lien and what company will be the servicer of the lien. Once your lien is sold to a third party, collection agencies can add fees and interest rates as high as 18% onto the debt. Property owners must arrange a payment agreement with the lien servicing company. And although payment agreements can be negotiated, they generally require down payments and are a much shorter time period to repay back the debt, um, usually less than three years. So paying the debt after the lien sale will be even more difficult for homeowners and the lien could lead to a foreclosure. Foreclosures can be filed by the trust after one year if the debt remains unpaid or as soon as six months after the sale date if the interest on the debt is unpaid when no payment plan has been started. It takes much less time to file a foreclosure for an unpaid lien than it does for an unpaid mortgage. So at this time, I am now going to be introducing Alexander Nippenberg, who is a staff attorney with Brooklyn Legal Services Corp A, who will be discussing the tax lien foreclosure. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you, Tamara, for the introduction. Um, before I begin, I would also like to thank NHS Brooklyn for giving us an opportunity to talk to all of you and discuss the tax lien sale, as well as all the elected officials that are supporting us 
um, in this matter. Um, just before I go on, I'd like to read, reiterate it one more time that <clears throat> the tax lien sale is coming up this Friday and you must do something tomorrow at least if you're on a lien sale. It's extremely important because if your lien does get sold, then the amount you will pay will be a lot, a lot higher than the amount that you can enter into with New York City right now. If your lien does get sold, um, whoever buys it usually charges exuberant amount of interest. They require down payment um, if you'd like to enter into a repayment plan. And the amount of time for repayment agreement is significantly less than if it's with a city. So please um, give a call to the New York City Department of Finances or to one of the organizations that can help you avoid being on a tax lien sale. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, there are not many defenses to a tax lien foreclosure. So if your lien does get sold, eventually one of the trusts to whom it gets sold will start a foreclosure action against you if you don't enter into repayment plan with them. Uh, unlike mortgage foreclosures, there are no settlement conferences where you can negotiate settlement. There are also no notice requirements that um, they have to comply with. And basically, there are not a lot of defenses and tax lien foreclosures go through a lot faster than mortgage foreclosures and often end up with your property being sold if you don't enter into agreement. Um, <clears throat> If you do get served, um, you can file an answer. You just have to know that since there are a lot less defenses, um, it's not always in the best interest to file an answer. However, uh, if you do have good defenses against this tax foreclosure action, then obviously an answer should be filed. Um, if you do file an answer to a for, uh, tax lien foreclosure, uh, a lot more fees are going to be charged to you again because now the whoever buys the tax lien and pursues foreclosure action against you, they will um, include a lot of attorney fees and those you are responsible for those attorney fees. So if you do choose to litigate this, just be aware if in the end you do settle, you will be responsible for all those attorney fees in a tax foreclosure. Um, at any point during uh, the tax foreclosure case, you can still uh, enter into a settlement. So again, I'm encouraging everyone to take action now and try to settle uh, with the New York City Depart Department of uh, Finances. However, even if your lien is sold and even if whoever buys a, pursues a foreclosure action against you, at any point during that foreclosure action before your property is sold, you can enter into repayment agreement. The difference is a lot more money will be spent by you because of the exuberant interest that they're going to charge and all the other fees that they're going to charge you. So again, I urge everyone to take action now. Um, at this point, I'd like to go back to Angela Davidson. Okay. Thank you very much for that information, Alex and Tamara. Really great information. You can reach out to them if you find yourself in that situation for legal representation. Thank you for that. Okay, so the moment we have been waiting for, although everything that went before were moments we were waiting for, but right now we're gonna turn over the floor to the people who have all the information regarding tax lien sale and how to enter into agreement and what are some of the next things that you have to do. So Ms. Sheila Voyard and team, Mr. Mike Sharp, Mr. Phil Weitzman, and Mr. Patrick Hendricks, they're gonna take the floor now and they're gonna walk us through what is a lien sale? How does someone get on? How do we get on? What are next steps since the deadline is tomorrow? So we're gonna yield the floor to Ms. Sheila Voyard and team at this point. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you, Angela. Thank you for putting this together, you and your team. This is really um, important information that property owners need to receive. Um, so um, without further delay, um, I think I'd like to start by introducing ourselves. So my name is Sheila Voyard. I am the New York City Department of Finance Director of Outreach. 
My name is Michael Sharp. I'm the Outreach Liaison, Department of Finance. Hi, my name is Phil Weitzman. I'm a senior trainer within HPD's Office of Enforcement and Neighborhood Services. HPD stands for the Department of Housing, Preservation, and Development. And my name is Patrick Hendricks. I am the Collections Unit Director in the Bureau of Customer Services at the New York City Department of Environmental Protection. Thank you. Great. Thank you all. Thank you all for joining me today um, to present this information. So what is the Aline cell, uh, Aline, um, rather in general terms, and what is the New York City lien cell process? So generally, a lien is a general, uh, it's a legal claim against real property for unpaid charges, generally placed on a property by a contractor or a creditor. So that's the general sense that most uh, property owners are aware of. The New York City lien cell is a legal claim against real property for unpaid property taxes, water and sewer charges, and other property, property related municipal charges, including the interest due on these charges. Um, so those, that's uh, mainly what the New York City lien cell um, is. Now, how are the different agencies involved in this process? And we can perhaps start with uh, HPD uh, so that we understand um, where you come into the mix. Thank you, Sheila. So um, HPD is here because we administer one very particular kind of charge that can end up in a lien sale, which are emergency repair charges. These are charges that are issued almost exclusively to rental properties. When a tenant files a complaint, an inspector writes a violation that has an emergency status. And if the owner does not respond to that violation, HPD will send its own staff to um, scope and hire a contractor to make that repair. And then that the bill for that repair will show up on the owner's property tax bill and can eventually end up in a lien. Now, these charges are different from uh, the other agencies in two ways. The first is that we, HPD, don't administer these charges. So if you have questions about what to do with those charges, I'll refer you to the Department of Finance. Uh, and the other thing is that these charges are completely preventable. So everybody's going to have a tax bill. Everybody will have a water bill, but you can avoid receiving these kinds of bills. And my best advice for that is to be sure that you have registered your property and to keep your contact information updated. Um, but to be clear, we don't administer the actual uh, lien sale of these charges. So if you have questions about that process, you'll want to discuss that with Department of Finance. Back to you, Sheila. Thank you. Um, so we understand now that HPD handles the emergency repair charges, right, that homeowners may be faced with. And thank you for explaining that uh, property owners need to be registered. Um, so these charges, unlike the property tax charges and water and sewer bills, these charges are completely avoidable, right? If, if the property owners keep an open line of communication with their tenants and are also uh, registered with HPD so that they can get any notices of complaints that may happen. So that's, that's great exactly. information to know. Um, so from the Department of Finance and um, we are responsible for assessing properties in New York City and collecting uh, property taxes. So as such, all the notices and attempt to collect property taxes fall under the responsibility of the Department of Finance. In addition, in, um, we also administer the lien sale process in collaboration with the Department of Environmental Protection and also the Housing Preservation and Development. We will handle the noticing, the publications, and then the reporting for the lien sale. So that's how we are involved. What about DEP? How are you involved in this process? So thank you, Sheila, for that question. Uh, DEP is involved in the annual lien sale because we're responsible for collecting outstanding lien eligible water and sewer charges. Thank you. All right. So all three agencies have something to collect from property owners, either it be water and sewer charges, property taxes, or emer uh, emergency repair charges. And these three types of charges, once they become overdue and meet a certain criteria, they become lienable. So they may end up on the lien sale list. So um, we'll break down as we go forward, how um, does that happen exactly? So um, let's talk a little bit about how a property gets into the lien sale list. Um, DEP, uh, Patrick, can you let us know what the criteria might be for um, water and sewer charges? Absolutely. Thank you, Sheila, for that question. So customers who are lien eligible can get into the lien sale 
in a couple of different ways. Predominantly, um, tax class one property that is comprised of mostly two and three family properties get in the lien sale if they owe at least $2,000 and it's, it's owed for at least one year. So that's predominantly two and three families on the tax class one. On the tax class two and tax class four, the criteria is a little different. The, the period of time that a customer could be delinquent is one year and for at least $1,000. So one year and a thousand dollars, if you're one of the larger residential properties or you're a commercial property that falls under tax class four, you would be put into the lien sale for owing that uh, $1,000, at least a thousand dollars for over a period of one year. Okay, thank you for that. Sheila, now, can I just ask you to excuse me one quick minute? So we just want to let participants on the line know, please enter your questions in the Q&A box if you have any burning questions, if they're not answered during the presentation. Thank you for that. Thank you, Sheila. Sure. Um, so for the Department of Finance, and this will also cover HBD charges, as Phil mentioned, once the charges become due, they are transferred to the Department of Finance, who is then responsible for the collection of these uh, charges, and we are also responsible for helping homeowners enter into payment agreements uh, for these charges. So for the uh, property tax uh, and uh, emergency repair charges, what we're looking at is a minimum of $1,000 um, for most properties. That's uh, the one to three family homes, class two and class four properties. So you must owe um, a minimum of $1,000. And for property tax that um, they have to be overdue for at least three years. So what that means is that if you just, uh, the charges have been overdue just the last quarter, the charges are not going to end up on the lien sell list. But once it reaches three years um, overdue, then at that point, and, it, and it's at least $1,000, at that point, it is eligible to be added to the lien sell list. For the emergency repair charges, the threshold is a little smaller. It's still um, a minimum of $1,000, but it needs to be overdue for at least one year. So once it's overdue for that amount of time or meets those criteria, then you know they are eligible to be added to the lien cell. So for property owners, you want to make sure that if you're facing financial um, hardship, that you are communicating with the respective agencies to figure out if you have any sort of programs, payment agreements that you can enter into. Oh, so that the, the um, charges won't be over. I have an event that tonight. I told Tanika that I had to switch for tomorrow, knowing that it's Quinn's birthday. I'm sorry, Angela? Oh, so sorry. All right. Um, so that's the criteria for being entered into the lien cell. Now, um, homeowners are notified in a number of ways um, about the lien cell, about their properties being added to the lien cell list. So within the process, we have a 90 day, 60 day, 30 day and 10 day publication uh, or, or notice that goes to the homeowners. So what that means is that once the properties have been added to the lien cell at the 90 day mark, the homeowner will get a letter saying that you are and the your property is on the lien cell and you have 90 days to address this the, this matter and provides the, um, the actions that the property owners can take to address um, their liens. At the 60 day mark, anybody that has already addressed their matters will be removed from that list and anyone else remaining um, will get a second letter at the 60 day mark letting them know that they're still on the lien cell. And then after that, we still issue a 30 day and a 10 day notice uh, following the same, um, the same format. And at the 10 day notice, there's also a publication that happens in major newspapers, again, providing homeowners an opportunity to learn about the lien cell. Um, DEP would also um, help us with uh, robocalls, so they will manage robocalls at each milestone of the lien cell. So at the 90 day, 60 day, 30 day, and 10 day mark, anybody who's still in the lien cell and that is registered and we have their phone numbers um, on record, then they, are, they will get a robocall letting them know about any upcoming outreach events that are available so that they can take action um, on their liens. 
In addition, we also work with um, community-based organizations such as NHS and also elected officials so that they can help us get the word out and help the constituents understand what they need to do to get out of the lean cell. So there's a lot of noticing going around, a lot of um, opportunities for homeowners to learn about this process. And we do it in that format just to give ample time so that you know the, the uh, required action can, be, can take place. Now, um, how can a property be removed from the lean cell? Um, now, the properties can be removed from the lean cell in three major ways. So they can either enter into, um, the property owner can either pay the outstanding debt, right? And um, as we mentioned, there's a certain um, criteria for each of the debts. So you want to pay the amount um, that it has landed you on the lien cell. Um, we, you can also enter into a payment agreement, and this is a legal agreement between you and the respective agency, providing how the, the charges are going to be paid over what period of time and what the terms of that agreement is. Then the third way is by um, filing for a um, property tax exemption, and we have three specific exemptions that can provide an opportunity for homeowners to remove their properties from the lien cell and will preclude them from being added to the lien cell in, uh, in the future. And we will break this down um, as we go forward. But again, three main ways to get out of the lien cell. And for the, the folks that are here today, if you have to take action on your lien, you know there's three things that you need to do. Either pay the bill, enter into a payment agreement, or um, file for a property tax exemption. If you qualify for it, that can uh, help you remove your property from the lien cell. Now, how do you take action on these? Let's break down the options a bit. Now, in terms of payment, if someone wanted to make a payment tomorrow or tonight, how do they go about making that payment for property tax charges or um, emergency repair charges? Well, very good question, Sheila. You can take action uh, by going to our website um, and paying online. We'll talk about three options that you have, but first and foremost, to go on to our website and pay online. There's as you see, uh, coming up shortly, there is a, a city pay or an IC pay, we call it, option. You go to our website, hit payments, you can scroll down, and you'll see the pay online option. Now here, you have a number of different things you can pay for, but we're actually worrying about the uh, property taxes. So here, there's an option to uh, pay property tax. As a guest, you don't need a registration or any special account. You select that. Here, you put in your, your borough block and lot number. And this will call up your property. <clears throat> and you can see there is a amount due today, minimum payment amount to get out of the lien. That's a very important number for you to have. If this particular property owes more than uh, that amount, but this is the key amount you need to be able to to have in mind paying. And you can actually make that payment right here on the site. With the short time that we have now, it's very important that you perhaps take this option or you're putting the payments directly in with the Department of Finance. And this would be for taxes and repair charges, for taxes and repair charges. Um, there is a, another option as well. You can call, I'll say the number, 212-291-2900. Uh, 212-291-2930. And there you can also submit your payment, speak to someone over the phone and make the payment in that way. The business centers are open, but we're not encouraging people to go, it's going. This it's the least safe way, and uh, it likely will be crowded. Um, but that option is there, and uh, we have operation hours, I believe, until 7 p.m. tomorrow. Normally, the hours are from 8:30 to 4:30, and so those are three ways in which you can pay. One thing that you should remember, though, you want to pay the oldest bills first. Like in our example, you see that dollar amount, that's the minimum payment to get you out of the lien. Well, in every situation, there is that 
number that you want to look for. This represents the oldest bills that are on uh, the account. And once again, these are for taxes and for repairs. You'll have to speak with the Department of uh, Environmental Protection for the water amounts. Sheila? Great, thank you. So um, Patrick, why don't you tell us what, um, how can people make payments um, for the, uh, their water and sewer uh, liens at this point? So thank you, Sheila. So I, I wish to strongly encourage, um, you know, folks who are still lien eligible are still appearing on the lien sale list that since we're at the 11th hour, um, we have essentially one more day left to you know, resolve any delinquencies, I would strongly suggest um, customers make payment um, online. So you can make your payment online by going to our website, nyc.gov forward slash DEP and signing up for a MyDEP account, which will allow you to make a, a, you know, payments as you see fit to get you out of the lien sale. Also, we have a dedicated, um, you know, 1-800 number, a 1-800 line, um, and this is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can make payment via phone, and that dedicated line is 866-622-8292. And all of this information that I'm sharing with you here this evening is on our website, I'll also copy it into the chat, but this is probably the two best ways, uh, considering the fact that we are almost uh, at, at lean sale. These would be the two options that I would strongly urge anyone who is still lean eligible. Um, obviously, there is still the, the, the pay by mail option, but if you make a payment by mail, obviously, um, it may not get to us in time. So that's the reason why I'm strongly encouraging most people who are still ineligible to make your payment either online or via the dedicated um, telephone number. Um, we also have uh, another option. We have access to retail cash locations. So, and again, I'll copy this into the chat. Um, you can visit the Cobra easy pay portal and again this information is online and you can create an easy pay slip and you can carry that easy pay slip to one of six to thousand participating locations and the following participating locations are 7-eleven cvs pharmacy dollar general family dollar speedway or one of the ACE Cash Express uh, locations, whereby you can pay in cash, but that involves you going to the Cobra Easy Pay portal and printing out an, an Easy Pay slip to take to one of those uh, cash locations. But again, to, to, to stress, I'm, 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 I'm really reiterating this, at this point, we're almost at top of the lean sale. I would suggest, strongly encourage paying online or via telephone. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you, Patrick. So one thing to, to uh, note is that if you are paying online, you could do this tonight, right? Our websites are open all night, so you can go, uh, go ahead and make the payment. However, if you have to wait to speak to someone on the phone or go to one of the centers, then that's going to delay the process. And we urge you that if you have the funds to make the payments, please take action tonight because the lien sale is on Friday. So you also want to give our, uh, our staff time to be able to process the payment and also remove your property from the lien sale. So please take action tonight of the, if this is the best option for you and then you are able to take uh, advantage of the payment option. Now let's talk about the, um, the second option. So um, um, applying for a property tax exemption. How can exemptions help property owners remove their property from the lien sale? Well, there are basically three exemptions that can remove a property from the lien sale. One would be the senior citizen's homeowner exemption, the disabled homeowner exemption, and lastly, uh, 
there is the combat and disabled veteran exemption. I'll give you a little bit of information about the three of them. Uh, for the senior citizens exemption, if due qualifications, this should be your primary residence. You, um, this is for one to three family homes, uh, co-ops uh, and the like. It's uh, age 65, income of $58,399 or less. And, and for individuals that fall under that, they can apply for this senior exemption. The disabled exemption is very similar. Uh, the income, the, 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 um, the income levels are the same. That's 58,399, but this is for a, a homeowner who has a disability and they're receiving SSI or SSDI, a similar federal type of uh, disability insurance. If you are a combat or disabled veteran, and that's if you were in the Gulf, Iraq, Afghanistan war, Vietnam, World War II, Korea, World War I, in these combat zones or during those periods of time, you may also apply for the exemption uh, to be removed from the lien sale. You can, uh, these applications are all online at the Department of Finance website. You can uh, go there to fill out the application and submit it online. You can take that action this evening. So those are the three exemptions from the Department of Finance that can remove you from the lien sale. Looks like we have a Department of Finance website coming up again. It will show you where you can find those exemptions. You go to Ways to Save. Then she's going to select uh, Property Owners. And on this page, you first see a, an overview of the um, exemptions we spoke about. Uh, exemption, the number two and the 2A, that's the senior and the uh, disabled homeowner exemption. Right next to that is exemption number three, the, the uh, veterans exemption. And you'll have detailed information about all of these below on the website. You can just scroll down and there's detailed information about each. And you can also apply uh, for anyone that you feel that you qualify for just by going to read more, apply online, and you come right to the exemptions page. Simply down, open the, the tab, and there you can see the online application for these um, applications or for these exemptions. So by all means, if you feel that you are eligible, senior, disabled, or veteran, take advantage of them. Thank you, my friend. And I'd like to reiterate that these, these exemptions help property owners save a substantial amount of money, um, could be thousands of dollars in, in many instances. And if a homeowner is fortunate enough to have the senior citizen homeowners exemption and the veterans exemption, they're saving more than half of their property taxes uh, on an annual basis. I'd like to also mention that you do not have to be on the lien cell to apply for these uh, exemptions. If you qualify now, as we mentioned before, there's this nice little chart that shows you all of the exemptions that uh, a property owner may potentially qualify for. As uh, Michael mentioned, uh, two, two A and three are the ones that will remove you from the lien sale and prevent you from being added to the lien cell um, in, future, uh, in the future. However, if you qualify for any other one or any of these, you can apply for them at any time. And we urge you to do that so that not only you can start saving today on your property taxes, but then you can also be precluded from being added to the lien cell list, um, assuming that you qualify for those three that we mentioned uh, before. So um, as you see here, you know how to find this information on our website now, always on the ways to save and property owners, and you can find the applications there. Now, what about H, uh, DEP? Do you have any exemptions that may um, allow somebody to be removed from the lien cell? Thank you for that question, Sheila. So DEP also honors the SCHE, DHE, and veterans exemptions uh, that are granted by DOF. And once we're made aware that the customer has an existing exemption, we would honor that exemption and remove them from the lien cell. In addition, DEP has a program called the Water Debt Assistance Program. 
Um, it's, it's, it's commonly called WDAP, WDAP, whereby if a property is in the lien sale and the owner is experiencing some type of recent mortgage delinquency for at least a month or more and also lives at the property, if that property is a two, three, or four family property, that customer may submit an application to join the program, which would enable us, a DP, to take the current charges on the account and place those charges in a holding area where those outstanding water and sewer charges are no longer due until the owner either sells the property, refinances the mortgage, or transfer ownership of the property to another party. So that would allow customers to, to, to get into the water debt assistance program. Thank you, Sheila. Great, thank you for that. So just to recap, we have exemptions for low income seniors, low income disabled individuals, veterans that are either disabled or served in, during a period of uh, combat as, as shown on our website, and also the Weed Up program for any homeowners that are facing uh, financial difficulties. Um, so again, take advantage of these exemptions if you qualify for them so that you can be removed from the lien sale. Now let's talk a little bit about payment agreements. What is the payment agreement process like? So oh, there are two basic payment agreements that you, two types that you can enter into. There's the standard uh, payment agreement and also a plan that's uh, relatively new, about a year old called PTA. And we'll talk to uh, about each of them for a bit. The standard payment agreement is basically an installment payment plan that you work out. Uh, it can range anywhere to pay off the debt from a, a few months up until 10 years. You can pay as little as zero down or as much as you want. The more you pay down, the less you have to pay going forward. And the basic idea is that you can structure your payments according to your budget. You can pay monthly or quarterly, but there's a key thing to remember, but once you come into this payment plan, you still must keep your current taxes up to date while you're paying off the past due amount according to the uh, payment plan. The payment plan agreement is a, is a um, form that you can also find online on our website. And if you fill this out, you can uh, email it to this email address, PTAID, that's P-T-A-I-D, at finance.nyc.gov. We'll mention that again at the end, but that's the standard payment plan. Now the um, PTA plan, as you can see there is on our website, right to the right there, we can, we can go into that. You'll see that there have three different payment plans available here, three different programs. There is the low income senior plan, the fixed income, uh, payment plan, also for a low income. And then there's the extenuating circumstances uh, plan. And let's break it down just a little bit. The low income senior plan, once again, this is for uh, class one properties, so that's your primary residence, and, and also a con and condos. You have uh, resided there for a year. And you must, for this plan, you must be 65 years or older and your income uh, must be 58,399 or less. And so that's the first plan. And this will enable you to defer your property taxes and, and uh, interest and associated with that for a great deal, for a great deal, for an extended period of time, you can do that. And for these, the PTA program, it stands for Property Tax and Interest Deferral Program. So what it's doing is it's in giving you the ability to uh, put off the paying of taxes until the time uh, that the property perhaps changes hands or is passed down or is sold. Now the uh, fixed term income-based plan is also a, a similar to the other payment plans where you're able to structure your payments in a way that suits your income and you are going to pay 
a percentage of what the taxes are as um, a pre percentage of what your income is towards your taxes. And this prearranged plan also defers the full payment of taxes into a later time or date. Lastly, there is the extenuating circumstances where you have a situation, maybe you've lost income. Many people have done that in this particular time period, but uh, an extenuating circumstance, loss of income, hardship, um, but it must be at least six months of lost income. You can apply for this plan, which will also help structure your property tax payments in a way that you can't afford. Now, many people have lost income, but it's not six months worth of income yet. Well, we encourage them to enter into, or they can look into applying for the fixed income plan. They are still at a loss of income when it gets to be six months. We are going to be able to transfer that over to the extenuating circumstance plan if that's what suits their situation better. You can email, fill these applications out online and submit them all to, once again, I'll give you that uh, email address. E-T-A-P-P-A-I-D at finance.nyc.gov. Sheila? Thank you, Mike. Um, for the application. So I just want to point out again, on our website, you can find the payment agreements for the uh, PT8 program as, as um, shown here. Uh, you can see that there is the, uh, there's a brochure um, the applications are also here. There's a PT8 estimator that you have to complete um, that shows what your income is um, because a lot of it has to do with the um, with your uh, the assessed value of your home. So you have to submit that information. Um, if you want to enter into a standard payment agreement, the payment agreements are also available here on the website. So as soon as you get this call, you want to get started on your payment agreement for property taxes or um, or the uh, emergency repair charges, you can do so by downloading the applications online. And then tomorrow or even tonight, if you're able to email them to the PT8 at finance at nyc.gov um, email address. So that first thing in the morning, it's already in the inboxes um, of the folks that are completing these applications. So again, you can see right on our website, you can make the payments and you can enter into the payment agreements uh, or, or download the payment agreement applications as well. Now, uh, what about DP? What is your payment agreement process like? Thank you, Sheila. So for DP, uh, a customer may enter into a payment agreement for a duration of anywhere between three months and 10 years with or without a down payment. For customers who are already in a payment agreement that has become either delinquent or defaulted, we would ask that the customer pay whatever is owed to bring the agreement current. A customer may also invoke a one-time option to make a 20% down payment to recreate a payment agreement. And finally, if a customer has defaulted on their payment agreement and wishes to re-enter a payment agreement because they cannot bring it current or cannot come up with the one-time 20% option, they may still be able to recreate an agreement if they're able to prove extenuating circumstances such as long-term illness, incarceration, job loss, or death of someone on the deed. And the standard here is similar to that of Department of Finance. The standard, the definition of long-term is at least six months. So any, any you know, loss of a, of, of a job, long-term illness, incarceration, or, or, or something for any period longer than six months, six months or longer, that would qualify you for extenuating circumstances. And at this point, I wish to reiterate again, since we're almost at lien sale time, if anyone who's lien eligible, who's still on the lien list, that wishes to apply for a, 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 a DEP payment agreement, they may do so by calling my unit at 718, 595-7890. You can also apply by emailing us at collectionsunit, C-O-L-L-E-C-T-I-O-N-S-U-N-I-T 
at dep.nyc.gov. And I'm also going to put this information into the, the, the chat. Again, I'm reiterating, give us a call, send us an email to resolve all your delinquencies and not have the headache of dealing with liens that are sold after uh, 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 September the 4th. Thank you, Sheila. Okay, thank you both for that information. Now, are there any interests or penalties associated with the lien sale? So unfortunately, there is interest uh, associated with the, 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 the lien sale. Um, so with respect to outstanding charges in the lien sale for properties with an assessed property value, uh, commonly referred to as APV, of $250,000 or less, the interest rate on outstanding charges is 3.25% from July 1st of this year through September the 30th of this year. Then on October 1st of, of this year, that interest will increase slightly to 5% for the duration of the fiscal year ending on June 30th, 2021. Now, let me, just, let me, just let me put this in perspective. Most of the properties in the lien sale in tax class one with, may, will, will fall within this APV, this assessed property value of $250,000 or less. I believe it's something about 90% of the properties fall within the, 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 the lower assessed property value. Now for properties with an assessed property value of more than $250,000, the interest rate on outstanding charges is 18% across the entire fiscal year. So that's an interesting uh, difference between um, most of the properties that would find itself in the, the lien sale and the larger residential properties and, 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 and some of the commercial properties. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you for that information. And just to reiterate, there are generally no penalties associated with the lien sale, but as, as was mentioned before by the legal uh, folks, um, once it's sold and it goes to the trust, there are uh, a number of additional charges that are assessed onto the lien. So it is always beneficial and cheaper if you deal with the agencies directly. It is not in any of the agency's interest to see your lien sold, uh, but we have provided options so that you can um, communicate with the agency so that you can remove the properties from the lien cell. If it is sold for whatever reason, you didn't get to enter into a payment agreement, pay or uh, file for a property tax exemption, the lien will be sold. There will be additional charges um, to onto the original um, amount um, and then you would have to deal with the um, the lien servicer at that point to pay those charges um, so definitely communication is key here uh, now what happens if a homeowner defaults on a payment agreement well if a homeowner defaults on the payment agreement and that's when there is a uh, bill is not paid for seven months at that point you can bring the um, a um, payment plan out of default by paying the past due amount. Um, if you can't do that, then you have the option of paying a 20% down payment of your outstanding balance, and that will make you eligible to reinstate the agreement. You can also submit an extenuating circumstances form uh, if you've incurred extenuating circumstances that have impacted your ability to pay. Now, this is just an application. It has to be reviewed uh, uh, by the collections unit and a determination is made regarding reinstating the agreement. But we must uh, want and emphasize that you must keep your current taxes up to date. Even though you have the payment plan and you're trying to get that reinstated, your current taxes, you must all keep those up to date as well. Thank you, Michael. And so this is, again, important information to know because uh, generally uh, 
a property owner will default because they don't uh, necessarily realize that they have to pay the payments that they uh, for the agreement, but then they also have to remain current in their current property taxes or water bills and whatnot. So you have to be able to appropriately manage or budget, you know, so that you know um, that you have what it takes to pay both charges so that you can remain um, uh, on record or, or um, up to date on these payment agreements. And so um, there are some financial counseling services available uh, for homeowners that are thinking into a payment agreement. Um, Obviously, if you're doing this now, you want to reach out to the agencies because there's not much time. Uh, but it's important to know that these um, services do um, exist. And our partners at the Center for New York City Neighborhoods generally provide, um, provide financial counseling services to homeowners entering into payment agreements. Now we can, uh, let's uh, run through again, how does somebody get help, gets help? We are in the nick of time, right? We literally have tomorrow, right, for uh, homeowners to take action. If we can run through again, how can taxpayers with more questions or perhaps unusual circumstances that they need to speak to someone um, at the agencies with, who can they contact or what numbers can they contact? Let's start with, uh, with HPD. I understand that your process is at the beginning, but what if somebody wants to know where these charges stem from or what they are about? Uh, who can they reach? Yes, uh, thank you, Sheila. So as you mentioned, just as a reminder, if you are dealing with emergency repair charges that are going to this Friday's lien sale, you want to reach out to Department of Finance, not HPD. But if you, in the going forward, if you have questions about emergency repair charges that do show up on your property tax bill, uh, you can go um, to our website. And as well, Sheila mentioned in the chat, we'll be sharing a PowerPoint presentation, a PDF with a lot of great information. All that information will be there. And you can speak to our staff who can give you more guidance and information about your charges. We have an online database where you can look up more information as well. And there is an option to protest emergency repair charges, although I should mention that the time frame for doing so is very short, so you would need to act quickly. Um, just as a final reminder, we encourage you to register your rental properties. If you're a rental property owner, the best way to prevent emergency repair charges is to communicate with us and you can find information about registration on our website as well. Back to you, Sheila. Thank you. Uh, what about the Department of Finance? For the Department of Finance, you can call 311 and this is through this portal, they route your calls to the various divisions or departments that uh, may be uh, the ones to answer your questions, but there are also other options. There is a tax lien ombudsman uh, that office gives specific help regarding the lien sale. The number is 212-291-4414. That's 212-291-4414. Two nine one four four one four. There is the tax lien email, which is uh, tax lien as T A X L I E N one word at finance nyc gov. And for those of you who are uh, submitting payment plans or PTA applications. Uh, that once again, that email is pta p t a i d at finance dot n y c dot gov. Thank you, Michael. Yeah. What about DEP? So on DEP side, if anyone has a tax lien related question for outstanding water and sewer delinquencies, they can call the collections unit at 718-595-7890 or email us at collectionsunit at dep.nyc.gov. Now, we also have an additional contact. If you have a really complicated tax lien issue with, with respect to water and sewer charges, something that is really complex, um, it's kind of unusual. We also have an, um, an ombudsperson. 
you can call that ombudsperson at 718-595-6628 or contact them via email at ombuds, O-M-B-U-D-S, at dep.nyc.gov. So important to remember, anything tax lien related, with respect to do with a payment agreement request, a payment request, or, or anything to do with a tax lien, give the collections unit a call or send us an, 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 an email to the dedicated email address. Thank you, Sheila. Great. So thank you all for that information. So I'd like to reiterate at this point, given that there's just one day left uh, before the lien sale, uh, you want to take action with the appropriate agency on the uh, lien sale website at the Department of Finance, the list of BBLs or borrow block and lots, which is the um, unique identifier for your property. Um, the list is on our website to show who is on the lien cell. So if you're not sure if you're on the lien cell, please make sure that you're looking at that list and you want to ensure that if your bill is with the Department of Finance that you are um, contacting the Department of Finance, um, or if it's an emergency repair charge, you also contact the Department of Finance. If it's a water and sewer bill, um, the Department of Environmental Protection. But given the timeline, your, the best use of your time is really reaching out to those agencies. Do not reach out to NHS tomorrow asking what to do or, or to help for help getting into a payment agreement or paying because you have to speak to the respective agencies and you want to do this as quickly as possible. So during the session, we shared the phone numbers and email addresses that you can shoot, uh, use to, um, for that information. Um, we will be sharing a PowerPoint presentation at the end to anyone that submitted their email address upon registration for this event. If you did not do so, please take the time now to send it to the host privately if you like. Um, send them your email address so that they can have that information to send you the PowerPoint presentation that has all of the information that we just shared um, in writing um, so that you can uh, really take the information and act on it. But please, we urge you to do so. Um, at this point, if there are any other additional questions that we can answer, and I've seen um, they are being answered on the chat as they are um, as they are being asked. But one of the questions that I wanted to um, comment on openly is about the exemptions. You can apply for exemptions at any time to be qualified for the exemption or, or get it for the uh, for the tax year and in that year. Um, you have to apply by March 15th. So March 15th of every year is the deadline. However, if you apply after March 15th, you will get the exemption for the following tax year, which will start July 1st of, um, in this case, 2021. Uh, but if you are on the lien cell today and you uh, apply for the exemption, right, we will process it and we will remove you from the lien cell today if you qualify for the exemption. So because you are looking to do that, that's the priority right now, removing you from the exemption. And then you will get the benefit next year. So um, just wanted to mention that um, openly. Any other questions that you can see that um, should be answered? Okay, Sheila, so I have one. And this person said they had a previous, they were on a previous DP sale list, maybe last year. And I guess they're trying now and they could not get a payment plan. I don't know if Patrick can speak to that. I think I just responded in the chat to that chat individual. To that okay. awesome. I, I would have to take a look, you know, you know, look at the individual um, circumstances and then be better able to speak to that uh, person. So I asked them to either call us or email us, um, you know, giving us some more information and we'll be able to, to review the, the issue and better able to respond to them. Okay, and I also have another, uh, two more questions. Is there a minimum debt that you have to owe to get into the WEDAP program? No, there is no minimum debt. There is okay. no, the, the, general, the general requirements are, ensuring that you live at a property. The property has to be either a two, three, or four family property. You, you have to live there. And we want to see, you know, proof that you have some type of mortgage uh, delinquency. Okay. And then the other question kind of um, feeds off that one. 
you know, you, you spoke about having to prove hardship in order to get into a payment agreement or get off the lien sale. Can you talk about what sort of proof someone would have to provide to prove the hardship? Well, so, so for example, if you're, if you're claiming job loss, if you can show us proof that you, you're receiving unemployment, that would, we, we, would, we would accept that. If you are saying to us that you, know, you, you, you lost your job or you weren't able to work because of long-term illness, then we would want a doctor's note. Not showing any, any personal medical information, you know, just a, a note from your doctor that says, you know, uh, customer X was incapacitated for, you know, X time and as a result couldn't work. That's it. That's all we need. You know, nothing Thank personal, you. nothing, nothing medical. Okay. Thank you. All right. That, that would be examples of, of, of proof that a, a customer could, could submit to us. Same question for Mike. Um, is there anything that, um, Department of Finance would need to show extenuating circumstances? A similar situation. Uh, just think about, you have to just show evidence of your circumstance. And um, if it's a medical, if it's medical related, if it's perhaps the death of a, a family member, that, that, that was a person that helped you to pay the bills, just showed up the evidence of the things that you are stating, and that's what you accompany with the. Um, okay, with thank the you for that. And I'll just like to add if there's any additional information needed, because we're not the actual processors of the agreement, um, they will request the additional information. And you just have to make sure that the, the contact information, and this goes for all of the agencies, if you email us tonight for a payment agreement. Or, um, or you leave us a phone number, please make sure that you are reachable, especially if you want to get out of the lean cell for this year. Um, if you send the EP an email tonight asking for a payment agreement tomorrow between the hours of 8.30 and 9 p.m., actually 9 p.m. and, and 8, um, 9 a.m. and 8 p.m., somebody may call you to ask for additional information or to provide the information that you need. So please make sure that you provide a contact information that is, that is good, that is the best number to reach you, and that you are also reachable. And the same thing for the Department of Finance. If we have any additional questions that we need of you, we need um, appropriate contact information so that we can contact you to request that information. Okay. So I think that takes us to the end of our presentation, unless there are any other questions out there from anyone, last chance to submit your questions. And so not seeing any questions, um, we want to thank you guys so very much, the Department of Finance, DEP, and HPD for joining us tonight and making this invaluable presentation happen for people who are out there. You know, as, as you heard, tomorrow is the deadline to enter into any agreement. The sale is on Friday. So if you don't get anything tomorrow and you are on this lien sale, you are going, your lien will be sold on Friday. So please, 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 you know, valuable information was shared with us tonight. A lot of numbers, websites, um, just know that if you provided your, your email to us tonight, we will be sending out all these numbers, email addresses that you can act on. Um, for people who did not provide us with their emails, we are going to ask you to send your email address to info at nhsbrooklyn.org so that we can send you all this invaluable bit of information that you can have it. If you're not on the lean sale, you might know someone who is on and you can share this information with them. So really, really great information tonight. We know it's the last minute, but we just want to make sure that we were here at the last minute to help you to save your home from the lean sale. And so we want we're asking you to check your email around 8 p.m. tonight. You will be getting the webinar, the, the slides from tonight, along with all the email addresses and the telephone numbers for you to reach out to. Again, the deadline to pay your debt or to set up a, pre, a payment plan so that your lien is not sold on Friday is tomorrow, Thursday, 9, the, the 3rd of September. And just remember that DEP will be open until 8 tomorrow. 
and um, Department of Finance will also be will be open until seven. So they're making it easy, or you know, at least making sure that they're there to accommodate as many people as possible. So please, again, we're just begging you, if you're one of those people out there, please reach out. Even if you don't think you're gonna get assistance, still reach out, right? We heard about all the different programs that are out there, the WEDAP, the, the, um, the, um, the Department of Finance site that has their in the, the P PT aid where you can get assistance, right? You heard about tax exemptions, really beneficial for people to know that these tax exemptions really help to reduce your tax payments, which then help you to manage your payments better. So please take advantage of all the information and all the resources that is out there to help you. And so we just wanna wrap this up by thanking the presenters tonight, Ms. Sheila Voyard from the Department of Finance, Mr. Patrick Hendricks from the Department of Preservation, Mr. Mike, where did you go? Mr. Michael Sharp from the Department of Finance, Phil, what, Mr. Phil Wiseman from HPD, Mr. Kevin Wolf from CNYCN, and Ms. Tamara Del Carmen and Mr. Alexander Nippenberg from New York's um, Brooklyn Corp A Legal Services, who presented on the legal side of what to do after. So, and of course, NHS, you can always contact us at nhsbrooklyn.org. That is our website. Our telephone number is 718. 469-4679. And again, we're asking you not to reach out to us tomorrow. Please reach out to one of these agencies. If, you know, whomever has your tax lien, reach out to them because NHS cannot help you, but these agency will be able to assist you in, in some form or guidance, you know, on, on what to do next. And so we just want to thank you all for attending tonight. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you, Angela. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Angela. Thanks, Angela. Have a good You're night. Welcome. Everyone is welcome. Thank you so much.